TE and TM analysis setup for waveguides. Before jumping into the math, let's remind ourselves about when TE and TM modes exist. What about a microstrip? Well, this is a transmission line. Transmission lines can support TE and TM modes. So the requirement really is just that it has a homogeneous dielectric. And we looked at this picture before, this microstrip does not have a homogeneous dielectric because you can imagine electric field lines fringing from the signal line up into the air and down into the dielectric. So the field lines are punching through two different dielectrics. It is inhomogeneous, does not support TE or TM modes. What about the strip line? Well, this has a homogeneous fill. It is a transmission line. Transmission lines are waveguides. They support TE and TM modes. It has a homogeneous fill. This does support TE and TM modes. It would be very rare that it, you would actually use it this way because then it would be a multi-moded transmission line and, and bad things can happen unless you're doing that on purpose. Then we move into the non-transmission line types of waveguides. This particular structure does not support TE or TM modes, and that's because there's an inhomogeneous fill. Let's look at two different cases of this rectangular waveguide. One has a perfectly homogeneous fill, and the other has a uniform direction. And this second case is not really one we'll talk about a whole lot here, but in either case, those support TE and TM modes. So when a waveguide does support TE and TM modes, it simplifies things considerably. Let's get into the math and set up our equations. Let's set up analysis for TE modes. TE modes is transverse electric. That means the Z component of the electric field is zero, but not the Z component of the magnetic field. So we had two equations, two differential equations, one to find the Z component of E, the other to find the Z component of H. But if our Z component of E is zero, we just take the zero solution of that differential equation and we just ignore it. We're not solving this one. So we really only have one equation to solve for the Z component of the magnetic fields. Given that solution, we can go back to our expressions for EX, EY, HX, and HY in terms of EZ and HZ and solve for the other four. So these equations are those expressions in terms of E not Z and H not Z, except I have set E not Z to zero. So once we find a solution to H not Z for TE modes, we can use these slightly simplified expressions to find the other four field components. We may be interested in the characteristic impedance for TE modes, and that is defined as the amplitude of the electric field divided by the amplitude of the magnetic field. We can substitute in the expressions we have above and simplify, and we end up here. And later on, when we actually solve this differential equation, calculate the phase constant, we will come back to this expression and calculate the characteristic impedance of the modes more precisely. But this phase constant needs to be found by solving our governing equation up here for the Z component of H. I'll mention one more thing. It's rather convenient we have everything in terms of the Z component of H because that is tangential to all of the boundaries and it makes applying boundary conditions a bit easier. We're going to repeat Almost the exact same thing for TM analysis. TM means transverse magnetic. Now we have the Z component of the magnetic field equal to zero. So we will ignore the differential equation for the Z component of H, just take the zero solution for it. And we only have to solve for E naught Z, the Z component of E. So since H naught Z is zero, now our equations to calculate the X and Y components of E and H don't have to have H not Z in them. So here's our revised set of equations to calculate those remaining four field components. Like before, 
We can derive an expression for calculating the characteristic impedance of our TM modes. It's defined as the amplitude of the electric field divided by the amplitude of the magnetic field. And at the end of the day, we end up with a very similar expression that we had for the impedance of the TE modes. We have the same problem though. This phase constant can only be found by solving our differential equation. So once we find a solution and we get a more precise expression for beta, we will substitute it back into this equation and get a more precise equation for the characteristic impedance. From the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for using EM Possible. I want to create more videos and I want to continue to improve how electromagnetics and computation is taught online. To do that, it will really help me if you can like this video and subscribe to our channel. I also want you to know we have a lot more content that you may not be aware of. See everything we have to offer at eimpossible.net.